Hello everyone, welcome to Chess.com video lecture series. This is International Master Mark Ginsberg, and I'm here with part two of when to use chess engines. If you recall last time, I recommended you use chess engines when you observe a game or play the game yourself where someone tried out an inferior opening, but you didn't remember, or the person you were watching didn't remember how to deal with it, and the game ended illogically. Chess engines help you check conclusions and remember why a certain uh, opening is bad, in particular inferior gambit lines. In this segment, we're going to talk about something um, more useful from a practical point of view, and that is to work out an opening system uh, based on positional principles, but the computer helps us identify tactical motifs, and we can work out a complete uh, structure on how to deal with an opening system. The opening I'm going to talk about in this segment is the Blumenfeld counter gambit, which is positionally dubious, and we're going to use the computer to help identify a solid treatment for white. But as I said, the treatment sometimes involves tactical motifs. Let's just start with the uh, introductory moves of the Blumenfeld, which are d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, c5 d5, and now the Blumenfeld is defined by b5. This move has been tested, as you know, in chess.com battles between Sam Shankland and, and Danny Wrench. And uh, from a gambiteer's point of view, the gambiteer would like white to uh, accept the gambit with de, fe, c takes b, and then d5, establishing a, a solid pawn center, and the bishops can go to aggressive locations. Instead of accepting the gambit, it's very well motivated in this case to decline, to keep a positional edge. The computer is going to back us up on this decision. Let's take a look. The critical move, the best way to decline, is to play bishop to g5. Before we go on, let's talk about why. The important thing to realize is that black's move b5 potentially weakens a whole complex of light squares, and the knight is a useful defender of the light squares, and particularly d5 square. If we eliminate the knight in many lines, we gain a stranglehold on the position. In this, in this exact position, uh, black has several defenses, but he does not reach equality in any of them. What we can do is we can use the computer and work out also using recent games as evidence, the reasons why white can keep an advantage. The first move I want to consider is queen to a5 check, which radically gets out of the g5 to d8 pin. However, with accurate play, we can gain an advantage after this move. It's interesting to notice that this move was tried, queen a5 check was tried in a recent U.S. championship game between Gregory Kaidanov, a very well-prepared Grandmaster, and young Grandmaster Ray Robson. In that game, Robson gained a draw, but only after Kaidanov missed numerous wins. This position is actually well known, but Kaidanov's choice of knight c3 is one of the less popular moves. But it gets, it gets the thumbs up from the computer. The computer gives white better in all lines. It's important to understand why white is better in all lines following this interposition, because it looks a little strange. The first uh, thing to notice is that black can continue his aggressive play with knight to e4, which prevents the potential ruining of his pawn structure, hits the knight on c3, and also hits the bishop on g5. Having said that, knight e4 is not a good move. In the kaidnov robson game, Kaidnov, for some unknown reason, played his bishop back to d2, and after this move, white has no advantage after the continuation knight takes d2, and however white takes back, black can just close up with b4, 
and reach a solid game. That bishop d2 was a surprising lemon because in this exact position, we can gain a large advantage with the simple capture c takes b. c takes b, which of course has computer approval, results in a, a very large advantage for white in all, in all variations. It's actually surprising how good this is. As an exercise to you, uh, take this position and study it further. If you have a chess engine, go ahead and run it. Otherwise, just look at it by yourself and verify that white is much better in all lines. This position is so good for white that we can consider this position uh, a refutation. Going back a little bit, let's say black didn't play knight e4. What else can he do? Well, he could play b4 immediately, trying to block up things. The computer has a little bit tougher time with that move, but after some cogitation, it realizes if you ruin the pawns at this exact moment and then bring the knight to the middle, you're going to have a slight advantage in this position as well. As an exercise, try to work out some potential continuations here and why white should be better. Let's go back a couple of moves. Instead of queen a5 check, can black play something else? Of course he can. He has a couple of other major continuations. What are they? Well, first of all, he can resolve the structure on the queen side and block everything off with b4. This results in a position where white, ideally, will try to pry black open with a3 and hope to control the c5 square after the c-pawn leaves c5. We don't want black to establish a blockading knight, for example, by that route. We want to stay on the queen side faster than black can get there. What is some other move for black besides b4? Well, another possible move, which isn't very good, is d6. Let's deal with this move first. Why conceptually should this not be very good? Because in the accepted line, if you recall, black established his pawns on d5 and c5, but in this line, he's only moving his d-pawn up one. Therefore, if we were to accept now, we gain advantage simply because black has lost time. If he takes back with the bishop, or if he takes back with the pawn, either way, we accept now and black's pawn did not arrive on d5 in one go. Having lost a tempo, white will be clearly better in all lines. You can verify this as well at home as an exercise. So conclusion, we're saying d6 is illogical, and after d6, we accept the gambit, and black is down a tempo and has insufficient compensation for the pawn. What other moves could he have? Well, let's see, we played bishop to g5. We took a quick look at queen a5 check. Recall the right move is knight c3. What else could he do? After bishop g5, as we said, he can block off. We saw d6 is inferior. And the other possible move is b takes c. The nice thing about this bishop g5 declining variation is that black doesn't have that many options. Let's take a look at the uh, possibility of, of b takes c. So, b takes c. What can white do? Well, no, the normal move is just to bring the knight to the middle. White simply intends to move e4 next, and in all variations, he should have advantage. For example, suppose black were to protect his c-pawn, which looks kind of weird. Of course. What could white do? Well, the computer just points out the obvious e4. Threatening e5. Suppose black were to break the pin. At this point, we can simply get rid of the offending knight. That is a critical motif which weakens black's control over the light squares. And at this point, we play the Benoni regrouping knight d2, and we're clearly better. The c-pawn is falling. Black's queen is strangely placed, and he doesn't have the bishop fianchettoed as he normally does. As an exercise, verify that this position is good for white. Rather easy, wasn't it? 
That's why b takes c is not a very good move. Bishop g5. What else can he do? Well, we have b4. We already saw queen a5 check. b4 is a possibility. d6 is not a good possibility. Queen a5 check is not particularly good. b takes c is not particularly good. Let's take a look at the b4 move. It stands to reason that the computer likes white to gain space with e4 immediately exploiting the pin. In this position, let's say black were to play the incautious move h6, which uh, tries to get rid of the bishop, because if the bishop left the pin, the e-pawn would hang. However, this move leads to a terrible position. We simply take the knight, queen takes, and immediately gain a huge center with e5. In this position, black is suffering. For example, if he played his queen to g6, we can strike immediately with bishop to d3, which is extraordinarily strong. Why can't he take on g2? Let's take a look. We just play the rook over. The queen comes up to h3, forced. We play the rook up. Queen comes back, which is forced. And now, do you see? Take a look. In many Blumenfeld positions, once white's bishop, bishop is out, we have the exchange in the center operation, which results in the lethal threat of bishop to e4. Remember that motif. Black can't capture the pawn, therefore, and even worse, if he took with the f-pawn, we could immediately nab the queen with that check. So if he can't take back the pawn, he's completely lost. Therefore, he cannot take on g2, going back. But if he doesn't take on g2, what can he do? Well, he could block with f5, but this position, needless to say, is very bad. White can put his knight to h4. If black brings his queen up to g5, we just protect the knight, and everything is working. We have f4 happening soon, and black's completely losing. These lines are very good to know, because even though they represent bad pl play for black, it's not necessarily the case that black's going to avoid this in a tournament game because you can easily outprepare him in these kind of structures because the computer can go so far in the lines. After bishop g5, black is, does not have an easy task at all. h6 is a big lemon. Let's go back. So instead of h6, what's a more reasonable move? A more reasonable move is to prevent e5 with d6. What now? Let's try to move a3. This hits him fast on the queen side. What can black do in response? Let's say he unpins, ignoring events. Now we can take the pawn. If black were to take back on b4, we have a queen check picking up that pawn with advantage. Therefore, he should try knight takes e4. But as the computer points out, we're going to have a safe advantage as follows. We take the bishop, black takes back, and computers and humans both like to develop with tempo. Let's just put the bishop out there. And what now? Well, suppose he took on d5. What would happen? Well, we just ignore with castles. Black's position is too shaky. His king is still not castled. And if he were to castle at this moment, we would simply take the uh, hanging pawn. Black's pieces are still awkward. And if he were to lunge with f5, which is, uh, of course, very ugly, we can gain advantage with any, any number of ways, among them knight to bd2. You can verify for yourself that the position is very bad for black. For example, after cb, rook e1. Not hard to verify. This is good for white. Notice how white is way ahead in development. Let's go back, because this did not represent good play for black.
after a3, is there something else to do besides bishop e7? Well, suppose he were to take the pawn off. At this point, white uh, has a choice of taking with the knight or the rook, and the computer slightly prefers knight. Let's see some lines. After bishop e7, we develop with bishop d3, and the computer uh, is liking it for white because we have more pieces out. But let's go on a little bit. Castles. What could white do? Do you see any possibility for white here? This is a good um, lesson. In these kind of positions, it looks like nothing much is going on. But the computer is invaluable to work tactical motifs into positions where it did not look like any existed. At this exact moment, white has a tactical motif with d5, which would take an eagle eye to spot. For example, after d takes e, we surprisingly move the pawn up, and remember, if this knight leaves the board, we're going to have bishop e4, which is going to be embarrassing. What could happen? Well, queen takes, bishop takes as advertised. Let's say he takes back with the pawn, bishop e4, and this is embarrassing. Black's rook is caught. In all variations after e5, white has advantage. Of course, black doesn't have to take the pawn, but what can he do? Suppose he, suppose he retreated the knight. If he retreated the knight, what can we do? Let's take a moment. Remember, tactical motifs exist in these positions. Although white's king is not yet to safety, he can safely uh, go after the rook. What he can do is, he can either play his bishop to e4 immediately, <clears throat> which is strong, or he can first put in d takes e, which is also strong. For example, if black were to take the bishop off, white ignores and goes ahead with the threat, and black uh, will have insufficient compensation for the lost material. It's pretty surprising, isn't it? This e5 break out of nowhere. The moral is, in the Blumenfeld, once Black's b-pawn has left the board, he's opened up the sensitive diagonal. If he did not occupy the diagonal with a bishop, always be on the lookout for these uh, amazing resources. Let's go back a little bit conceptually and see the start point. The start point with, was bishop g5. Let's see if we can uh, think about this a little bit more and work out some interesting lines. Let's say black were to close it off with b4. We've seen this before. The computer likes to play e4. That looks good for white. What else can black do? If black put the queen out check first, the knight would be unpinned. But remember, we have knight c3. This looks pretty nice for white. Let's actually play over a game which featured the move b4. Remember Robson played knight e4, which was a lemon, as I said, due to c takes b, although Kaidenov played bishop d2. After b4, let's play over a game that white won, just to get a feel for it. We ruin the pawns. We play knight to e4. And at this point, black is not doing very well in this position. For example, if he put his bishop to e7, what can white do? Well, he has a choice. He can play his pawn to g3, hoping to get his bishop to the useful diagonal, or he can more radically play g4, which holds up black's f5 move pretty well. The computer likes g3 better because it doesn't fear f5, knight ed2. It considers black's uh, pawns to be slightly messed up, and white should have advantage. Let's go back a little bit and see a more aggressive move for black, which has been played. b3 check. But that move actually is very poor. We just return with the knight, and after pawn takes, 
were just helping White by getting his pieces out. One Grandmaster level game continued Queen B4, E4, and now Black's position is, is a sorry sight. He played his rook to G8. His pieces are scattered. In fact, he has no minor pieces out. White just protects on the G file. Black tries to blast open the game for the two bishops, but a, but a situation like this is guaranteed not to work. In this particular case, White just accepts. Black's, Black brings his bishop to the open diagonal, and in a top-level game, this kind of stuff's not going to work. White just keeps taking. Black regains some material. And at this point, White's completely winning. The game finished with d takes e, bishop takes g2, getting on that diagonal. And black really is completely lost. He tried his knight out. There was nothing better. d takes e, which hits the rook. Knight b4, which hits white's rook, causing a little bit of confusion, but not too much. It's safe to take that one. Black played a check. King f1. And although it looks a little bit scary, nothing's really going on. Bishop takes. This is all bluff. And the game terminated very mundanely with white grabbing more material. Black has no follow-up whatsoever. He just put his queen to the middle. White brought his king to safety. And after this move, we're getting near the end of the line. Black hits on f2, but these are all one-move threats. Rook f1 defending. And he decides last gasp. He plays his bishop check. White accepts. Black plays another knight check. White accepts. Black plays a queen check. But unfortunately, white has a way to block. And after rook g6, which still doesn't really threaten anything, white was able to get the queens off. And as you'll agree, this was a complete massacre where the player playing back Black, um, Kogan, rated 25-15, was massacred, basically. His pieces never got out of the box. Ionescu was white, with the same rating, curiously, 25-15, and this was played Manresa, 1997. It's useful to have these games as reference points. And remember, if we go back to the very beginning, we go back to the very basic Blumenfeld, it's useful to know that Robson tried against Kaidenov, and it's useful to know what Kaidenov did, because that's going to probably be a start point for something strong. And it was. Bishop g5, queen a5 check, dubious, knight c3, exclamation, knight e4, very bad, and now Kaidenov missed c takes b. I want you to take uh, this bishop g5 position and uh, subject it to computer engine analysis if you have it, and also use your databases to look up prior games. Your mission is to prove that d6 is bad, prove b takes c is bad, prove queen a5 is pretty bad, prove h6 is bad, and the toughest move might be b4 here, and I want you to show advantage after a3. You should be able to do all those things, and these little homeworks give you a complete weapon against the Blumenfeld. Once you do these things, try to think about what, what Black's toughest line is and focus most of your energies on that. And also remember these tactical refutations of the, uh, of the less good lines. I will post an article on the chess.com as a companion to this talk so we can explore the motifs and uh, look at some recent books that came out on the subject, for example, by Agard and Euron Bush and uh, New and Chess Secrets Opening Surprises. And we can explore their recommendations for black and point out why they're not that good. Because I think white has advantage here in all lines. So that's it for now. I gave you plenty of stuff to do. Look for the companion article on chess.com and post your thoughts there in a Q&A forum. And I'll be joining you next time with an installment of when to use and when not to use computer engines. Thanks a lot. Talk to you later. Thank you.